do, Farsiders. Let's talk Spider-Man Homecoming. Did I go to any of my homecomings? Farside movie reviews. All right, you guys, so listen, let's jump right in and talk about Spider-Man Homecoming. And boy, I have mixed feelings about this movie, and I'll get into all of that. So this is like our third iteration of Spider-Man, right? Our first one was Tobey Maguire, and then we had Andrew Garfield, and now we have Tom Holland. So here's the thing about Spider-Man Homecoming. First, let me just say that I do think that this is a good movie, but I think that if you are a diehard Spider-Man fan like myself, and I'm like a diehard fan, like I got comic books in the closet, all wrapped, boxed, and everything, I'm probably a millionaire. I'm, I, I'm sure. I'm sure they're worth about a million dollars right now. And I hope I've never given you my address. I'm the thing, like, I'm that kid that used to get up on Saturday mornings with the big bowl of cereal and the onesies and just, like, watch Spider-Man and Friends with Firestorm and Iceman. Like, I go way back like that and just all the comic books and all that good stuff. So from that standpoint, this movie was pretty good because this movie depicted the Spider-Man that I grew up on, right? The Spider-Man that I really enjoyed. The, the teenager that was dealing with now having these superpowers. So this movie is very much in that vein. As a matter of fact, I would almost say that this movie is really about the life of Peter Parker and Spider-Man and not necessarily the life of Spider-Man and Peter Parker. You get what I'm saying? There's a heavy emphasis based um, on what it's like to be a teenager, i.e. Peter Parker, that has inherited these superpowers and that has had this experience with this amazing superhero group, the Avengers. So you see a, a lot of different things going on in this movie, but a big part of the narrative here is really what it's like for him to deal with all of that. Now the movie to me does pace a little bit slowly at times, and dare I say that some people might find this movie a little bit boring. Now I wanna be careful there, because I don't wanna turn you off, because I think this is a movie that you should go see. Now there's plenty of action in this movie, but there is heavy emphasis on the storytelling and the experience of Parker as a teenager. You should know that before you go in. So depending on how you feel about that, if you just want to see web slinging 24-7, you're not going to see that. You're going to get some story. Now, it is an interesting story, and it feels different from any other Spider-Man movie that you've seen. Now, that happens for a couple of different reasons. One, that happens because of the introduction of Tony Stark as his mentor. And no, Tony Stark is not all through this movie, but he is in there enough to make it interesting. It gives it just enough of an interesting a uh, different take on things to make this movie really interesting and to make you want to see more of how he will interact with the Avengers in the future. So that's pretty cool about this movie. But the story is really based on his relationships more or less. So let's talk about the action in this movie for those of you guys who wanted to see the web slinging and all that kind. I never realized how double jointed my thumbs are. Look how they bend back like that. Huh. Uh, anyway, okay. So for those of you guys who wanted to see that, you do get action in this movie, and the action sequences are pretty good. The problem with the action sequences is they're not nearly as visceral enough, and I was actually happy to hear other people comment about that because I thought it was just me. I thought I was the only one that looked at the action, and I was like, um, is anybody going to get hurt here? Because it looks like people are just getting scratches. This stuff doesn't even need a Band-Aid. It should have been much more visceral. Really, at no point in time did I really feel like Peter was threatened uh, at all in this movie, and I would have liked to have seen that more of that. Um, I mean, it was good. The action was good, but it wasn't. It wasn't necessarily intense enough for me. I don't know. You know what? When you see it, comment below and let me know what you think about it. But I, I just really wanted the action to be much more visceral, um, and, and the stakes to be a bit higher when it came to the action and I just really didn't feel that way. The character motivation for everybody in this movie is good. So you understand where everybody is in this movie. You understand why they do the things they do. You understand how they got where they are, which is really good because don't you hate a movie where something happens and you're like, how'd that happen? Why'd they do that? You don't get that in this movie. You understand where everybody is. So that's a nice thing about this movie as well. Um, the interaction with Tony Stark, let's go back to that and talk about that a little bit. Tony Stark and Happy, his assistant, is actually pretty good too because um, it nicely brings Spider-Man into the MCU, which is the Marvel Cinematic Universe, for those of you guys who don't know. This film is a joint venture between Sony and Marvel, so Spider-Man now is, is situated in the MCU. Those other movies he was not, which is cool. 
because that does give him another angle. And it also allows some possibilities for him that we couldn't have seen in the other movies as well. I'm basing that on some of the things I've seen in this film. I can't really say much about it, you guys, because it will spoil things for you. And I don't want to spoil anything for you. I want you to enjoy it. So this version of Spider-Man opens up a lot of different things, a lot of different exciting possibilities here. And I really like Tom Holland in the role of Spider-Man because he really does feel like a teenage Spider-Man, whereas the other is so much, not really, but he really does. So there are some Easter eggs in here as well. Let me check my time. Oh, okay, I'm doing all right. So there's some Easter eggs in here as well. So make sure you keep your eyes open because there are some things that they show you. Some things are really obvious, some things not so much. Um, to see if you can catch those Easter eggs so that you can pick up on maybe some possibility of things to come. Let's talk about Marissa Tomei as Aunt May real quick, and then we'll get ready to wrap this up. Uh, I like her as Aunt May. Some people complain because Aunt May is always older in the other films, and, Par and Marissa Tomei is, is a lot younger. I thought that was a cool take on her character, how they went a little bit different. And you guys will notice this. Even some of the diehard fans, they really do try to service us diehard Spider-Man fans a lot, but they do vary some, which is nice. It's something different. It's something fresh. Fresh is something new. It does not take away from the film, in my opinion. Michael Keaton is Vulture, perfect. I mean, if you if you go and look at some of the old images of Vulture from the comic books, even like the ones from way way back in the day, and you look at Michael Keaton right now, he looks like the Vulture. Put some wings on him, and he looks like the Vulture. So he was a perfect fit for that. Not to mention that he had the acting chops to pull it off, and he does pull it off very well. I, I really enjoyed him as Vulture. Nice little twist in this movie as well, too. Make sure you pay attention to that. Just thought I would throw that in there as well. So all in all, you guys, this is is, is not a bad film. Um, it's, a definitely, it's definitely an enjoyable film. I, man, I don't even know if I should rank this for you guys, but I feel like I need to. So... If I had to rank it, I, so personally, I enjoyed the first Spider-Man a lot. I really did like the first Spider-Man. I don't think that Tobey Maguire was the best choice for Spider-Man, but I thought that all in all, that film was pretty good. And I liked that film a lot because I really did like the action in that film as well. I thought that um, Raimi did a really good job with that. Um, so I would say Spider-Man 1 probably is my favorite. And then Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, I'm really, I'm really intrigued by Spider-Man Homecoming because I just think the potential for this thing to do so much. I mean, the the outbreak of Spidey movies we could get from this would be phenomenal, especially when you add that Avengers piece. It's just like, <laughs> I mean, you just can't help but be excited. But um, so all in all, you guys, you know, I think this is worth worth your money. This is not a save your money film. This thing definitely deserves your dollars. Get out to the movie theater, see it. Let me know what you think about it. If you've seen it, let me know what you think about it. I'm curious to know what you thought about the pacing. Did you think there was enough action? Did you think it was slow? Did you think it was perfect? Did you think, oh, Al, you're a moron. Everything about this movie was excellent. Comment below and let me know that, you guys. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up. Please share it as well. And don't forget, don't you go, don't you go anywhere before you smash that subscribe button, you guys. We do have a number that we are trying to reach. I've been away for a minute, so I'm still trying to get to 500. You guys, very close at, what am I at, 481, I think, right now. So, guys, thank you so much. And please, don't forget to, oh, yeah. I got nothing. Peace.